The Sturgeon Refinery, that's about 60% complete and located 45 kilometers outside of Edmonton, is looking more and more like a government boondoggle. The refinery is scheduled to process 79,000 barrels of bitumen to convert to diesel and other products, but the fallout of this deal is going to land directly on the Alberta taxpayer. Initially backed by the Progressive Conservatives, they dedicated $6.5 billion to the project, but then later quietly announced that they would dedicate an additional $2 billion, bringing the price tag to $8.5 billion. And this is the largest financing project in Canadian history. And now the NDP has increased its borrowing limit from $300 million to $400 million, raising concerns over the risks to the Alberta taxpayer over the continued financial contributions from the government of Alberta. So much so that Greg Clark wrote a letter to the Auditor General expressing these concerns. But the key to this deal is that the Alberta government takes bitumen in lieu of royalties. So they'll be supplying 75% of the bitumen to the refinery, while CNRL will supply 25%. And toll fees are being incorporated to cover the operator's initial costs, to repay debt and also to earn a rate of return on equity. But there's another catch. CNRL is 50% owner of the refinery. So this means that the Alberta government is taking the most risk due to a variance in commodity pricing. Even when times were good, this refinery was never a good idea. There are real concerns over the profitability of this project and Moody's is now considering a credit downgrade. Over the span of 30 years, the project is only expected to bring in a profit of 200 to 700 million dollars on an $8.5 billion investment. So not only is the Alberta government taking the most risk, we stand to lose billions of dollars just over the variability in market pricing. What's more is we already learned this lesson from Saskatchewan in the 90s who purchased the Government of Canada and Alberta's equity in the bi-provincial upgrader that process heavy oil to light synthetic crude. And it should come as no surprise that equity was sold because the price differential between heavy oil and light synthetic crude wasn't enough to cover the costs of operating the refinery. Later, Saskatchewan sold its equity to Husky when it could recover investment costs. This is why all Canadian governments should have backed the Keystone XL pipeline. Not only does the US have the capacity to refine our heavy resource, but they want it. This would have reduced commodity risks by just simply selling our product and not taking on the extra costs of refining it in our own backyard. In addition to being able to transport more of our heavy resource, the Keystone XL would have also reduced bottlenecking, which would have increased the market price that we get for our oil. But what does the NDP think about refining in Alberta? They want to do more of it. If we ship uh, unprocessed bitumen to Texas, according to this government and to the American government, we will give tens of thousands of Alberta jobs to Texas, not to Alberta. My take on this, I think it's exactly what it looks like. A government boondoggle that should have never been taken on in the first place. But it looks like it's full steam ahead for Rachel Notley and the NDP on refining this resource in our own backyard. And it'll be on the backs of Albertans. For the Rebel.media, I'm Holly Nicholas.